Hello, bonjour, ciao, good day students, Mr. Mayor here with another short video on spherical mirrors, um, another problem solving one using the mirror formula and the magnification formula. Um, this time we'll do one a little bit more difficult than the last one. Uh, but just to kick it off, here's a, here's a silly joke. Uh, what did the male magnet, sorry, what did the male magnet say to the female magnet? He said, from your backside, I thought you were repulsive. However, after seeing you from the front, I find you rather attractive. Oh God, that's terrible. All right, here we go. Uh, so, 21 is the question that we're gonna do today. So this one is, um, this one is on page 397 of chapter 17. Um, and yeah, let's have a look at it. So it's a two star question. So there's a level of difficulty in this one. It's not too bad though. Uh, so what have we got here? We've got a dentist uses, sorry, a dentist wishes to use a concave mirror to view a, a patient's teeth. If he wants the image to be twice as large as the object and upright when the mirror is placed two centimetres from the teeth, what focal length mirror is needed? So I'm sure we've all been to the dentist and we've had that experience of uh, that little mirror that you know he has on the end of a, a probe that he sticks into your mouth. Um, so one of those, so it's a really small mirror, it's a concave mirror and what are, we, what are we looking at here? We've got a concave mirror and we want the image to be twice as large as the object. Okay, we want the image to be upright. And we know that the mirror is two centimeters from the teeth. Okay, let's write some of these things down. So we've got a concave mirror, concave mirror. We've got the image. So let's say the height of the image uh, needs to be twice the height of the object. Okay, and the image needs also to be upright. Image is upright. Now that gives away quite a few clues, in fact. Um, what else have we got here? We've got that um, the mirror is two centimeters from the teeth. So that means you, the distance to the, to the object is two centimeters. All right, so that gives us lots of information. Uh, let's have a look at our handout that we have for cases for images formed in concave mirrors. So now we're looking for an upright image. Now if we scan through here, we can see that in those first two cases at least, the, um, the image is inverted. Let's keep going down. Case three, it's inverted. <clears throat> case four, there is no image. Case five, the last case for a concave mirror, uh, we have the image is upright. And you can see it's a virtual image. It's on the other side of the mirror. So we're looking at something like this and you can see that you know, always in this case, the image is, is magnified, and that's that's consistent with what we we need here. We need the height of the image to be double the height of the object. Okay, so so what it says actually, because the image is upright, straight away we know that implies that we're dealing with a virtual image. Okay, we're dealing with a virtual image, and if we're dealing with a virtual image, um, it implies that the object, the object is between the mirror and the focus, okay? So we'll say inside, inside F, okay? So if we draw a, a ray diagram, or, you know, a diagram to represent this, we can see that it's a pretty horrible principal axis there, never mind, principal axis. I'm sort of standing up while I do this, so that's why it's a bit awkward to draw. So we have, um, we have our focal, we'll say that's our focal point, and that can be our center of curvature. So we know our object is somewhere in here, and we know our image will be somewhere up here, okay? Now, do we want to draw ray diagrams for that situation? Well, let me have a go. All right, this is always fun. So we have a ray that goes from the top of the object, parallel, hits the mirror, and then reflects back through the focus. So we've got that ray happening like that. Now what should happen is the, um, the virtual projection of that ray back behind the mirror should, should cut through and give us an idea as to where our, our image is. But we need another ray to confirm the exact position. So the, the other ray that we would do would be the one that would be coming from the focus, from the focus, the top of the image, hitting the mirror. And then, so that ray is going in that direction and then reflecting or parallel and you can see this is where my, my image is horribly um, not horribly but just a little bit out so if we if we take this ray back parallel we see that this is actually where this 
is more accurately what the image should be. Okay, something like that. And I'm just going to be really fussy about this and get that right. Not that it's right, because if I was doing this correctly, I'd be using a ruler to measure it all. Okay, so that's my image. That's my object. And it's virtual, obviously. Virtual, upright, magnified, all that stuff. Okay, so um, if you saw the last problem, uh, problem 13, you would have seen something similar to this, actually. So um, knowing that the height of the image is twice the height of the object, that tells us something about the magnification here. So the magnification, which is... HI over HO. Um, here we can just rearrange this and we can see that's that's just equal to two. Okay, which makes sense because it, the image is twice the height of the object, so that's pretty obvious. I mean, you don't have to really do any mathematics to figure that out. Um, but then also, uh, also what that implies is that V over U is equal to two. Okay, so let's just highlight that bit of information because that's going to be important for later on when we do a bit of substituting. In fact, let's bring it down here and just really work with that. So we've got V over U is equal to two. Uh, let's write that as V equals two lots of U. That's even better right there. Good, now, so uh, to solve this, uh, we'll use a mirror formula. Now let's realize that um, we're not given the focus, the focus or the focal length, I should say, is the, is the thing we have to find in this. Um, indeed. So, but we do have, we do have U. We do have U. So if we have U, then, you know, if U is equal to 2, then clearly V is equal to 4, 2 lots of. So we have U and V. Oh, look, this is just, sorry. U is 2, V is 4. So we have both U and V. F is all we need to find, we just go straight to our, our mirror formula. So let's let's do that. So let's write that up here. 1 on F is 1 on U plus 1 on V. Uh, 1 on F is, well, F is what we're trying to find. So U is 2, V is 4. Um, common denominator, or you might know that a half plus a quarter is just 3 quarters. Yes, 1 on F is 3 quarters, which means F is 4 thirds. So F is about 1.33 recurring, right, centimetres. Uh, now in the case of, you know, a, a dentist mirror inside your mouth, um, you know, you're roughly going to say it's about 1.3 centimetres, aren't you? So if the mirror is 1.3 centimetres from the teeth, right, so here's your, this is your teeth, there's the mirror, um, then the image that the dentist will see behind the mirror, the virtual image, will be double, okay? That's it, that's that problem done. Um, let's do one quick other one. So I'll just rip this, rip this off. Okay, so now we're gonna look at question 39. Uh, question 39, we have an object, 20 centimeters in front of a convex mirror, of focal length, 30 centimeters. Okay, I'm just gonna start with that. So let's write that stuff down here. So we have a convex mirror, we have, well, this will be the principal axis, and we have an object that is 20 centimeters in front of that. So let's say, oh, and the focal length of the mirror is 30. So if that's, if that's F and that's C, so we've got that F is equal to 30 centimeters. And I mean, we could, you know, from that we can see that C would be equal to 60, because remember that C is always 2F, okay? Um, so that, that distance here, if we, if we look at that, that, that distance here would be 30 centimeters from the from this point of the mirror to the to the actual focal point on our principal principal axis. Yes. Okay. Now our object is over here somewhere. Um, so let's go back to this. Sorry. Um, so we've got the focal length is 30 centimeters. Convex mirror. Um, Convex mirror, by the way, a convex mirror is that sort of mirror, yes. And the object is 20 centimeters. So, so we have an object that is probably somewhere around here. So let's draw our object in, say, about here. That's our object. Okay, and that's, that's 20 centimeters. Okay, 20 centimeters. So we're saying that um, in, in the case of this convex mirror, 
convex mirror, we have f is 30, we have u is equal to 20, and let's be 100% correct here and say that f is negative 30, because with a convex mirror, convex mirror, we always have, all right, so let's just jot, jot down here, convex mirror, we always have f is less than zero, we have v is less than zero, so negative values there, and u is positive, okay? So we think of this side of the mirror as being positive, this side as being negative, okay? So it's like a number line kind of switched around. Okay, so this is a positive number, this will be a negative number. We won't write it as a negative here, we're looking at just magnitudes here, but in the formula we need to sub it in as a negative. Okay, so, um, good, we know that, now what? Um, now it says there's more, we have a plane mirror. Now the plane mirror is placed between the object and the convex mirror. Okay, it just says and the mirror, so it's a, the only other mirror is a convex mirror. So that the image of the top half of the object in the convex mirror and the bottom half of the object in the plane mirror coincide. So, so what that's saying is there's a mirror, there's a plane mirror somewhere in here, somewhere in here. Um, now, how is that gonna work? Oh well, it because we still get we still get an image in the convex mirror from this object. So if we put a plane mirror in here, it can't obstruct the object completely, not a hundred percent. So it's probably just some way, some way through here. In fact, it said half of the object. So let's go back and read this again. It says um, it says the image in the top half of the object um, is in the convex mirror and the bottom half of the object is in the plane mirror and they coincide. So, okay, so here's our plane mirror. Okay, let's just say that's the plane mirror. And of course, just to emphasize this is the convex mirror. Okay, so we've got this object has an image in the plane mirror, right? The bottom half of the object has an image in the plane mirror and the top half of the object has an image in the convex mirror and where those images happen, they actually coincide. Now, um, you might recall with plane mirrors, some of the properties of plane mirrors, plane mirrors are really simple to, to analyze. We know that U is equal to V, okay? In other words, the distance from the object to the mirror is the same as the distance from the, the image to the mirror, so that's always true. Uh, we also know that HI is equal to HO, okay? Um, so <clears throat> just looking at this scenario here, we can say that the plane mirror is some distance uh, x away from the object, okay, so that's x, um, and we know that the a distance x beyond the plane mirror, right, and probably beyond the convex mirror, uh, will also be x, okay, um, yes, it will, so, so what we'll have is, and I'll use a red pen here, so we'll have, say, the, the object has its image here, so this will be the image, uh, in two parts, in two parts. So let's just use this here. Okay, this is, okay, it's probably getting a little bit complicated here, but I'm sure we'll cope. I'm sure we'll cope. So we're calling this thing the image. This is the image. Remember, this is the plane mirror. Okay, so that's our plane mirror. All right. Now, <clears throat> so what we have is this section, this is image in the plane. This is image in the convex, right? So the top half of the object has an image in the convex mirror. The bottom half of the object has an image in the plane mirror. Where those two half images happen, they actually happen in the same place, behind the convex. It has to be behind the convex mirror because always with convex mirrors, we have virtual images, don't we? So always virtual images for convex mirrors. Okay, hopefully you guys are following me on this. Um, now, it's really just a case of, um, we've, we've called a variable x here, the, the distance from the object to the plane mirror. Now, x is also the distance from the plane mirror back to here. Now, we know that the distance from the mirror to that image, that double image, will be v, okay? Um, so let's write down what we've got here. So, um, so let's just, here, so, this, this out of the way, this out of the way. So let's just focus in on what we've got. We know that uh, in terms of the convex mirror, we know that U is equal to uh, 20 centimeters. Um, we know that um, 
V, well we don't know what V is, but we know V is negative at least. Um, and what else do we know? What else do we know? Okay, we know this distance, in fact. Okay, so this distance here, which is the distance between the mirror, the convex mirror and the plane mirror, right, is 20 minus x, because that's x, and the whole thing is 20. So this distance here is 20 minus x. 20 minus x. So then we can say, we can say that x here, x here, this is getting complicated, isn't it? We can say that x, let's just write something about x, x here is equal to 20 minus x, 20 minus x, uh, plus v, plus v. Okay, so we have a relationship between x and v now. now let's just muck around with this a bit. Uh, so what this is really saying is we have 2x minus 20 is equal to v, um, which is really, you know, 2 lots of x minus 10 is equal to v. So that's, that's our relationship between v, the distance from the convex mirror to the image, and x, which is the distance of the object to the plane mirror. So hopefully you guys can follow that through. It's a, just, a, just a whole bunch of distances that we have to figure out now. Um, so v is, there it is, v is equal to 2 lots of x minus 10, okay? So that's our relationship between uh, x and v. Okay, good. All right, now, f. What do we know about f, the focal length? We know f is equal to negative 30. Now, I should just add in here that this is a negative, remember? Okay, so coming back to here, v must be negative. So we've got f is negative, v must be negative. So we need to put a negative there. I think we're ready to go. So what's the uh, question here? Let's come back to the question. The question is, um, what distance is the plane mirror from the convex mirror? So we need to find this distance here. I've called it 20 minus x. So I guess if we can find x, it's pretty easy to find 20 minus x, isn't it? All right, so if we apply our mirror formula, so the mirror formula, mirror formula on this information, right? So 1 on f is 1 on u plus 1 on v. Okay, so let's just make sure we fit this in. So 1 on negative 30, what's u? u is 1 on, so u is 20, so it's 1 on 20. And then v is negative 2x minus 10. Okay, wow, what do we do with that? Well, that, don't freak out, that's not too bad. We can, we can deal with this. Uh, let's put the numbers to one side of the equation. So we're, we're looking at 1 over 30, or negative 1 over 30, minus 1 over 20 is equal to negative 1 over 2x minus 10. Okay, that's looking a bit better. Let's um, come up to here and continue our working. All right, so, um, so what do we got? So let's look at a common denominator here with our with our 30 and our 20, so the common denominator there is going to be 60. So we're looking at um, negative 2 over 60, replacing the negative 1 over 30, and 1 over 20 gets replaced with 3 over 60, and that's equal to negative 1 over, lots of negatives here, but we'll, we'll clean them up in a minute. 10, good. So this becomes negative 5 over 60, uh, which, is, which is really nice, because 5 divides into 60 12 times, 1 over 2x minus 10, and then looking at that, well, we don't need negatives anymore. Um, multiply both sides by negative one. Uh, this is one over 12. This is one over two X minus 10. We can equate our denominators now. So we can see that 12 is equal to two X, two brackets X minus 10. Um, that's gonna be a six. Now I'm running out of space here, so I'm just quickly gonna throw the answer in. Uh, so just looking at that, we get a 6 here, x minus 10 is 6, uh, move the 10 across, x will be equal to 16. How does that look? 16 centimetres. That's what x is. Now, if x is 16, so we come back up here, we know that, so let's just scribble in here a bit. We know that this distance now here is 16 centimetres. That's 16. Remember, that's 20 overall, so that means this bit in here, right, the 20 minus x, that must be 4 centimetres. That must be 4 centimetres. So, to answer our question, um, you can just finish up here and say, uh, therefore, um, there is a 4 centimetre uh, separation 
between the plane and the convex mirrors. And I'm just going to check that I've got that right. Yes, that is the right answer. Good. Thank you very much. Thanks for hanging in there. Cheers. See you guys.